For months, Russia was torn by strikes, riots, mutinies, and political assassinations. Nicholas feared that the violence would topple his empire. Toward the end of 1905, he issued the October Manifesto. In this document, he promised basic civil liberties. He also announced the formation of a national legislature, or Duma, that would have to approve all new laws. The first Duma met the following year. It did not take long for delegates to learn that despite promised reforms, Nicholas II was still in charge. After 10 weeks, Nicholas simply dissolved the Duma because the majority of those elected had opposed him. Nicholas had survived the revolution of 1905, but the people's anger didn't disappear. And in just a few short years, the people would rise again. And the Tsar's regime and his empire would come crashing down. Did you know? In 1932, the Hollywood studio MGM released Rasputin and the Empress, a film that portrayed a love affair within a fictional Russian royal family. But the princess in the film was based on real-life Russian princess Irina Romanov Yusupov, who filed a lawsuit against MGM, claiming libel. Because she won her suit, all Hollywood films now include a disclaimer. Tsar Nicholas II of Russia managed to maintain control in Russia following the revolution of 1905. But the actions he took following the revolution eventually led to another one. And this time, the revolution would bring down his empire. How do revolutions change things? Revolutions make people think in a new way. They get rid of old power, they put in new ones, new forms of government. They give people freedoms. Well, if it's successful, then it's changed for the better. Unsuccessful uh, revolution, nothing really happens. The people who are protesting just get punished. Well, revolution's necessary for any sort of political change to happen. In the short term, revolutions can overthrow the government and the people, the dissenting people, and change the government so it sort of supports what they do. It's just a cycle in history that a regime usually becomes more oppressive and then a revolution has to occur for it to become more free. In the long term, the difficulty of this is the people need to maintain their government. People's war in a lot of circumstances is needed and justified um, in order to replace illegitimate regimes and illegitimate authority. In 1913, Tsar Nicholas II and his wife Alexandra celebrated the 300th anniversary of the Romanov dynasty. For three long centuries, Tsars from the Romanov family had ruled Russia. Rebellions against the injustices of the Tsarist regime broke out now and then, but they had always been crushed. After the failure of the revolution of 1905, Life in Russia seemed to return to normal. But an international crisis was about to fan the flames of discontent once again. When World War I erupted, Tsar Nicholas sent his armies into battle against Germany. Russia had the second largest army in Europe, but it was one of the least industrialized countries in the war. Its military relied on sheer numbers against its more advanced German enemy. As a result, Russian casualties mounted quickly. Rumors of military incompetence spread and soon turned the Russian people against the war. To help bolster morale, Nicholas decided to go to the front lines and take control of the army himself. While he was away, Tsarina Alexandra was left in charge of the country. But many didn't trust Alexandra because she had been a German princess before marrying Nicholas. This led to a string of resignations among the Tsar's ministers. The Tsarina put her trust in a man whose name would come to haunt the Tsar, Grigory Rasputin. Rasputin was a semi-literate peasant and a self-professed holy man. 
He was well known for his religious fervor and earthly indulgences. But Rasputin had won Alexandra over with his charisma and his ability to help her son. Alexis, the Tsar's only son, had hemophilia, a genetic blood disorder. Rasputin seemed to be the only person who could alleviate the boy's suffering. Rasputin gained a strong influence over the royal family. Alexandra, who came to see Rasputin as important to the safety of her son, was completely captivated by him. When the Tsar went to the front lines to supervise the troops, Rasputin transformed his influence over Alexis and Alexandra into political power. Officials who criticized his growing power were removed from their posts. The Tsarina replaced them with Rasputin's friends or others whom he could control. Rasputin's behavior and scandals involving the officials he recommended undermined the Tsar's authority. Making matters worse, back on the front lines, Nicholas was having no better luck than the generals he had replaced. The Tsar's popularity plummeted as Russian casualties mounted. Food became scarce and inflation increased the suffering on the home front. Seeing that the empire was in trouble again, a group of wealthy Russian nobles in St. Petersburg, including the Tsar's cousin, decided that the Tsar's authority must be returned. Getting rid of Rasputin was the first step. In December 1916, they plotted to assassinate Rasputin and end the shame he was heaping on the monarchy. When a generous portion of poison failed to kill him, Rasputin was shot. and his body was thrown into the frozen Neva River. But it was too late. Rasputin's incompetent political appointees had helped convince the Russian people that the Tsar's government was hopeless. And as the Tsar's ongoing war with Germany made Russia's failures mount and its food dwindle, the government was rocked to its very foundations. Finally, Nicholas was forced to abdicate in 1917. He became a prisoner, first in his own palace, then in Siberia. Russia erupted into revolution and civil war. Revolutionary Bolsheviks seized power and battled against the forces still loyal to the Tsar. The Bolsheviks feared that the Tsar might one day return to power. So on the night of July 16, 1918, they executed the Tsar and his family. By late 1920, the fighting was over. Vladimir Lenin and his Bolsheviks, now known as communists, were busy turning the Russian Empire into the Soviet Union and the Romanov dynasty that had ruled Russia for more than 300 years was gone. You've been given all the information. Now it's your turn to discuss the questions. Take a moment to talk about the following. What tensions within Russia led to the revolution of 1905? How did the actions of the Tsar and Tsarina bring down the Russian Empire? We hope you've enjoyed this assignment discovery journey into the lost empires of Asia and Russia. If you'd like to learn more about what you've just seen, go online or check out these books at your local library. That's a wrap for today, but tune in next time as America goes to war with itself. <laughs>